In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So tonight is, is a Q&A time for us to, to answer questions that have been given um, and some other questions we think may, may have been asked. They just haven't been brought up to us uh, about the vision of this church. When I came here three and a half years ago, um, the church was in a different spiritual place than I think it is today. And what God has, has given to myself and the leadership is where we're going. And if you remember the first year, the motto was going deeper, to go deeper in God's word, all of us to go deeper, to spend that time to go deeper. Why? Then the second year, that because we went deeper, now we can go further going outside of these walls. And with what is happening um, in the world today, the last two years, 18, 20, 22 months, it's just been crazy with how the world has changed, how the world has changed. But God's word never changes. And so a never changing cross and an ever changing culture, we are going to keep the main thing, the main thing that is Jesus always has been and always will be. And for us, real quickly, I'm just going to give a, a real quick, simple definition of, of the, the vision, and then we'll really get into the nuts and bolts uh, uh, and, and our statement and so forth. But what God has shown me in the spiritual leadership that we are to occupy or redeem the time that we are here before Christ comes for his church. So what does that mean to occupy? Well, when you look in the, the Greek, it's to do business, to keep going on in business. Whose business? God's business. God's business. We are to redeem the time that we are here by equipping the saints, edifying the church, and then proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because in this time of uncertainty, and it's going to get even more crazy, Many, many are going to be searching, and we have what they need. We have Jesus, and we are to be able to proclaim that. That's why verse by verse, chapter by chapter, book by book, we study, we read the Word of God so that it can be part of our lives. Why? So then we can go out there and preach. We can teach the gospel of Jesus Christ, for that is what the world needs. The world needs Jesus. So the vision, really quickly in a nutshell, is to occupy, redeem the time that we still have. I think we are in the last days, the last of the last days, for us to equip the saints to edify those here and to proclaim the gospel, the good news of Jesus. Do you have the statement there? That... Yeah. And so, this is also a work of, pro um, how would you say that? Uh, work in progress. A work in, in progress. We are coming together and, and, and we're still tinkering with this, but you know, we, have, we have the skeletal and we just need to fill it in, which we're gonna do. And as soon as we have, have it 90% done, then it's gonna go on, on social media so everybody knows. So that it's there, you can go. And I don't know how easy it is for you guys to read that here in the sanctuary or at home, but I'll just read the vision statement to make sure that we all are kind of coming from the same place. It says, the vision of Calvary Chapel Grants Pass is to be a gospel-centered, Bible teacher, teaching, ever-growing body of believers who are committed in knowing Jesus Christ and making him known by being conformed to his image through the power of the Holy Spirit, where we carry out the Great Commission by building God's kingdom for his glory, where real life and faith intersect embracing the loss, equipping the saints, and educating the next generation, where we show God's love practically through outreach, spreading God's grace with his acts of agape love, where we embrace a never-ending cross and an ever-changing culture. So that's the first part of it. That's the overarching vision statement. And one of the things that we started working on right before COVID hit was how we actually take that vision that God's given the leadership here 
and you know, um, practically where the kind of our our faith uh, meets our feet, and we get out to the community and actually live out this vision as a church. And so, part of um, what we're trying to do here is actually put a practical way of being able to to do that. You know, where where throughout it will visually um, be able to to show the church. Uh, the various ministries, how you can get involved in those ministries, who's over each one of those ministries. And really what we'll be doing is uh, what we're behind the scenes trying to develop is a pathway from, you know, uh, from being saved through, you know, finding out what your spiritual gifts are, then practically using your spiritual gifts, growing in your spiritual gifts. So we'll, we'll have a... Uh, we're developing basically a continuum of growth for everyone in the church. And of course, everybody will be on a different spot within that continuum. And one of the other things through this whole process is not is that we have a lot of faithful servants in this church that for too long have kind of been left on their own. You know, they've just kind of done whatever they their part of the ministry was and didn't have a lot of support because we didn't have a lot of, for lack of a better term, structure as far as the, the different ministry goes. And as all of you know, where the spirit leads, there's going to be unity. And so everything that we do or everything that's going to be done is we want it to all align with God's vision for this church. We don't want anything to be outside of it because it just causes confusion and division. And so we just want to make sure that vision is all in, you know, that we're all going in the same, uh, in the same way, you know, uh, towards a, a, with the same vision, uh, you know, because we want to be of one accord, like the early church was in the book of Acts, as it talks about, you know, everybody was spirit filled. They all had, they were all a unity of spirit and, and had the same heart and mind. And that's what we're, what we're striving for. And so what we're doing, and it's, it's been a lot of behind the scenes meetings and stuff trying to develop this is we want to make sure that we have, that we're able to support that at every level of service that there really is. And, and so we'll, we've developed almost like an organizational chart of how that can happen and who's over every ministry and that kind of stuff so that it, so that everybody has the support necessary to, to be able to um, live out their gifts and callings that God's given them. So that's part of, you know, we, the vision is kind of the spiritual piece of it, and then presenting it's kind of the practical piece on how, where everyone plugs into that vision and how we as a church can all move in the same direction by being part of it. You know, the, the Bible talks about the church being a body. You know, if, if everybody was a nose, then nobody would be able to see, right? And if everybody was a hand, then nobody would be able to walk kind of thing. And so God's given us all varying gifts for a reason. And so what we're trying to do is take those varying gifts that everybody's been blessed with here and move them all in the same direction and in unity uh, towards the goal of reaching the lost, right? And, and, and to have a pastoral support for all of them, okay? Uh, as he's talking about having a head that, that every every ministry, as you mentioned, the organizational chart, it starts with with with, with Christ and, and and then goes down. But there is going to be a pastoral covering for every ministry to support those that are already doing the work to 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 support those coming in, and we, it, we just haven't had that. Uh, and and you have to remember, none of this was really in place three and a half years ago. And so what we've been trying to do is, is to move forward in this and, and, and COVID did set us back as it set everyone back. And so now we are really starting to implement discussions and things that we had talked about a couple of years ago that we just kind of were laid aside. But that's good because all in God's timing. And isn't it great where we are in the book of Romans, talking about gifts and all of us, God has given us gifts and how we are all to be encouraging 
and edifying each other. I mean, it just all fits. God has perfect timing for this. It says that, uh, that we have been united together in the likeness of his death, dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we are the body of Christ. It says the I now becomes a we, the my becomes an our, and the me now becomes an us. So what um, we've been doing is we've got a complete um, visual of every single ministry that is currently happening. And then we also have another flow chart and, and complete ministry of where the vision of Pastor Troy and, and Kevin, where they where, where the leadership wants it to be in three years. So we're going to start with just what is currently happening, the current ministries that are taking place now, and where we need to set overseers so that we can come in and help and encourage and edify and build those ministries. Not to take away, but to help to support. connected here I, I think I've got it now I was looking for the so I don't know how well you can see this it's pretty small on you by the way you're laughing I'm gonna assume not very well let's see here is that any okay so how to I'll just have to do it kind of piece by piece here but um, as we started this, we wanted to develop it, like I said, with roles and offices that the church already has. And of course, you know, as with, or at least it better be in any church, the head of it needs to be Jesus Christ. If he's not, if he's not leading the church, then you're at the wrong church and you need to find a new one. And then, of course, Pastor Troy is the, the senior pastor um, and worship leader. He's in charge of the worship team there and also our elder board. And then it goes down to me as the administrative pastor, so I'm in charge of obviously administration and counseling. And then um, those that kind of are in charge of ministry, and like I said, this will change. We have Pastor Aaron who's in charge of prayer, discipleship, the deacons, ushers and greeters, and visitation. I hope this is, you guys can see this okay, but. Then, then we have Pastor Frank, who's in, who's in charge of, obviously, the seniors ministry. And that would be home fellowship and the home fellowship. So um, on that side, he has a home fellowship. Then the senior ministries, he has senior outreach and counseling for the seniors. Then we have, yes, you read that right, Pastor Jerry Keeling. That's, we're, we will be ordaining him pretty soon. So, um, yeah. Um, you took away my joke. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so he's in charge of the men's ministry and hospitality, and, and then you see the different areas of, of the ministries he's involved with. And then we have Pastor Tyson, who's in charge of community outreach, which you know, is a refuge center and other community events, um, which would be things like Harbeck Apartments and that. And then, of course, He's in charge of the uh, youth and children, the high, which is the high school, middle school, and children classrooms, and Jesus Pizza Club. And then we have some weird lady who's in charge of um, women's small groups, women's Bible studies, and, and women's events. So, so these are just, you know, the, those that, when I say in charge, those are just kind of the contact people. So if you have a question regarding one of these, and we'll have this in a format and we'll have it printed nicely where everybody knows who they can talk to and who's kind of in control of those or as far as, you know, events go and different things. So, so we're wanting to, you know, like I said, what we want to do is provide the ability if someone wants to get involved in a ministry, at least have an idea of who they start with talking to. Um, and it also gives us a, the ability to say, you know, you don't really need to talk to us. You need to go talk to 
Jerry or you need to talk to Tyson or Linda or whoever. Um, you know, because one of the things that happen in any organization that you also need to control is the communication, right? If, if I'm answering all the questions that, let's say, Pastor Frank should really be going to Pastor Frank, then he's left out in the dark uh, and has no idea of the, whatever I'm deciding for his ministries, right? And, and so the way we're working this is all the information kind of, we want this um, this flow chart here to both flow upwards and downwards so that, uh, you know, we're able, not only are we gonna be, you know, kind of casting the vision and, and all of these different branches are gonna be, you know, each section is, is going to um, help be a part of how the vision gets fulfilled, but at the same time, we want it from the bottom up to be able to be able to communicate so that all of the, all of the comments, concerns, questions, whatever it may be, also gets filtered back up to us, to me, to Pastor Troy. Does that make sense? So we're, we're trying to develop also a communication thing because you know it's real easy for it to get lost in, in an organization like this, in a church like this. So that's one of the reasons why we're developing this. And like I said, it's so that we can make sure that each and every ministry and each and everything that's building this vision um, that we're trying to cast is is covered and that there's someone there that can make sure and support, you know, that those who are on the actually doing the work are have the support that they need, um, you know, to fulfill the ministry, if it makes sense. So and Kevin, can I say something real no. quick? Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Unity. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, Aaron, go ahead. Like like Kevin was saying, one of the and Troy was saying, one of the main um, ideas behind this is that we're not trying to subtract anyone. There are there have, there have been people here like Cheryl and Corey that have been ministering for over a decade in this church. And we're not trying to take away or subtract anything that, that is already being done well. What we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to, we're trying to get into the, um, have the same mindset so that we're all in one accord. Because this is about ministering the gospel of Jesus Christ to bring about real change. Okay, faith always produces obedience. So it says, we should be joined and knit together by what every joint supplies. So if there are different gifts available in the church, we need to, we need to harness those gifts and we need to knit those gifts together so that we actually add to the church like they did in the book of Acts. So we're not taking away from any ministry that's currently going on. All we're trying to do is support, encourage, and bring the proper resources so that we can grow. We can do something way beyond what we have already been doing. And I think that when we have that kind of a structure and we kind of have that kind of outflow because of the, because of the gifts of that grace, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, we grow. And it's all to God glory. It's for his namesake. So, for instance, like, like, like you see up here, it says that, that uh, some of these overseers will be in charge of certain areas, but it's not going to be taking away from those areas. It's going to be adding support, strength, and vitality so that we can become even stronger and we can do more, not take away. You guys understand that? Okay. And when you, when you look at this flow chart, we actually have it broken down each ministry. We have names on it, you know, that are already serving or, or that are leading that. What this is just really showing is the pastoral oversight. Okay. Yeah, this is just kind of the first part of it. And, you know, to give an example of, of how we're trying to move in unity, for instance, one of the things we're looking about, looking at and praying at is looking for curriculum that where we're teaching uh, from basically, you know, the kindergarten level all the way through high school, the same information, obviously, at 
each classroom's level of comprehension. So, you know, we're trying to push the whole, you know, the whole, let's say, youth department with the same materials, you know, it's the same thing, so that as they go up in each class, which we're, you know, of course, praying about adding more classes to, that they'll be equipped. And the one nice thing about some of the curriculum, for instance, that we looked at, is that it has leader guides. So let's say someone shows up sick and we need to um, ask someone to come take over for that day, uh, we can hand them a leader's guide and at least they'll be somewhat equipped or be able to kind of help them through it. And, and so once again, it's a support thing where we're able to, uh, you know, try to get everybody on the same page. And, and we're kind of doing that, trying to do that with not just, you know, um, the the youth ministries and stuff, but we're trying to do it with each ministry is make sure that we're all kind of on the same page because what we really want, right, as a church um, from kind of cradle the grave, we want to be able to minister to everybody and keep everybody on the same page. So what that would look like is, you know, we want the kindergartners to be equipped for the, uh, you know, for the for the children's class. We want the children to be eventually be equipped to go to the middle school class. We want the middle schoolers to be equipped by the time they go to the high schoolers. Then we want the high schoolers to be equipped to come in the sanctuary. And so it's this whole thing. And then, you know, uh, young adults, et cetera, you know, we, we have all of this where we want to, you know, be able to, to be able to have that full pathway and be able to support everyone in whatever season they're going through. And so it's a big task, um, you know, and there's a lot that needs to be done. But the one thing I do know is we serve a big God. And, uh, you know, uh, we were talking about this before, and I'll let Pastor Aaron tell the story, but the last thing we want to do is vision or, um, you know, try to put in a box what God wants to do. We don't want to limit God in this church. You want to tell that story, Aaron? That I know it was edifying for me and Troy. Yeah, so um, my wife and I um, watched the story of Chuck Smith and his testimony and how he was raised and how he got involved with ministry and went from little church to little church and actually earned $15 a month in his first beginnings and was very humbled by walking into a church when he thought that it was going to be adding 100 people to 200 people to 300 people and he actually went down to 25 people in two years and it taught him to trust God. It, it taught him that it wasn't going to be through his own strength, through his own wisdom. And so when at the very end of his ministry, when he settled in Costa Mesa and God began to bring um, this movement of, of people and, and basically uh, people that were outcasts, that, that were not invited to any other church because of the way they looked, because of the way they dressed, because of the way they spoke. And Chuck Smith opened them with welcome arms. Now, he welcomed them to come in. He did not continue to ask them to, to remain the way they were because he knew that the word of God would bring about real change, real authentic change in their hearts. So when he began to preach, the, the numbers grew and that church began to grow and grow. And then as the men grew up, they became anointed because of the word of God that was taught week after week, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. And they began to explode and it became 30 Calvary chapels and then 100 and then 1500 Calvary chapels and then it went nationwide and they began to build schools. At the very end of the interview, the lady was interviewing Chuck Smith and she says, well, what's on the horizon for Calvary Chapel? What's on the horizon for Chuck Smith? And he says, never ask me that question. He said, if I was going to answer that question 50 years ago, I would have said, let's build something like this. And he was sitting in Costa Mesa that sat 5,000 people. And he said, could you imagine if I would have just asked for this? I, my, my expectation, my goals are so small that I never ask God to do something that I want to do. I always submit and allow God to have his way because he can do so much more than I could ever imagine. Why do we do that? We put God on a box. You know? Our God is huge. Amen. Well, um, 
I think that was basically the setup for some of the questions. Um, so I'll just read one of the questions here and then maybe one of you two can start the discussion. How about, if I feel that God is calling me to get involved in one of these ministries, are there steps or some kind of preparation that I need to do prior to entering into service here at CCGP? Well, we are currently working on a, uh, uh, on a template that all volunteers will go through to be able to um, serve here, okay? Obviously, the, the first thing is, is we wanna make sure that this is your home church. We want you to be here for a while, that you, you know, this, this is where I feel God's calling me. And that, that, that's, that time period, usually it's six months, it's, it's, it's for two reasons. So number one, that you can make sure that you feel comfortable here and you know what? Okay, this is my home church. And then for us to be able to watch, we watch, we watch what people do, what people say, how they act. And, and then when someone comes and says, well, I wanna get involved, it's like, pray, pray. Or we'll ask someone who we've been watching, hey, I want you to pray about this and really pray about it. And we'll talk later, you know? So often people would come up to me that have been here for a week or two, hey, and I play guitar. Play pretty good guitar. We should get. I, I should get. You know. Hey, let, let, let's let's play together and see if we can do something on stage. It's like, yeah. Why don't you just sit? You know, just sit. I'm, I'm, I love the passion, but I want to make sure that this is the home church for that individual, and that the individual's heart is right. Because what it, what is more important to me in worship and it is across the board is not your talent, not your gift, but your heart. Your heart. All right. That, that, that's what God looks at. Amen. And, you know, some practical things, too, along that, you know, to, to be involved in ministry here, um, you're going to have to read um, Calvary Distinctives and make sure you agree with what we teach here. And also, um, you know, you're going to have to agree to the vision of the church. Uh, because the last thing we want is anybody serving in the church that's not in agreement or not going the same direction that we're going. You know, it's, it's not that it's wrong if you don't agree with the vision of the church, but if you're gonna serve in a position of ministry here at the church, you need to be going in the same direction we are. So, so there will be those kind of things. And, and we talked about other things, for instance, um, you know, we have the, this chart here, and, and so let's say you want to be a home group, uh, you want to teach at a home group. Well, okay, you're gonna to have to, let's say, put. and this is just an example of, um, that we've kind of talked about, it's nothing written in stone, but let's say you want to be a teacher at a home group. Well, then you're gonna to have to sit under one of the teachers at the home group, Pastor Frank or, or Pastor Aaron for a period of time, and, start taking some responsibility, seeing how it is, that kind of stuff. So what we're trying to do is, is develop not only the natural mentorship, but also, like he said, you know, for us to be able to observe and, and get feedback from some of the leaders that, yeah, they're ready. You know, it's a good, um, it's, they're a good fit. Let's, let's have them teach a Bible, uh, you know, a home fellowship, that kind of stuff. So it's just, like I said, it's all about trying to get everybody on the same page in the same accord and moving forward. So it's just, you know, like I said, it's for, and it gives us the ability to pour into those who feel called and those who are taking the steps to be able to, uh, you know, in faith move forward and say, yeah, I'm gonna put myself out there. And, you know, and then obviously to, it gives us a chance to observe and see how faithful they are in, in doing it, so. And I, and I think that, you know, so often because of what's being taught here from the pulpit, which is, you know, chapter by chapter, book by book and verse by verse, it says that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So there's the reason that it is the word is taught is because it develops the man or the woman for ministry 
so that they might know God's will, they might know God's purpose, they might know God's plan of redemption. So when, when people come in and they sit for month after month, it's not like a, it's not like a, a trial entry. It's, it's, it's getting grounded and settled in your faith that you might know who God is, know his will, know his plan, know his purpose. Like Pastor Kevin said, know his heart. So because when, when you go into ministry, you're not just, you're not alone. This is for the entire building of the church body. It's where God is going to dwell one day. So um, the, the whole point is, is that when, when we let down ourselves, we let down other people that are coming, okay? And, and it's, it's their souls. It's for their edification. When we, when we drop out of ministry for, for whatever reason, we're, we're letting down hundreds and hundreds of people that are, that are coming and being fed or that are being edified or being, you know, that's how we lead. We lead by being trustworthy because we've first been proven. So that's a, that's a really key to entering into ministry. Amen. Count the cost. Exactly. All right, well, the next part, it kind of, we've already touched on that, but it says, uh, what are some of the practical things that I can do to help fulfill the vision while well, this is being set in the motion? Uh, I think, obviously, the first thing would be pray. Um, and secondly, you know, talk to one of the leaders over the ministries that you feel led to get involved with. And, and then, you know, just kind of go from there. But uh, the biggest thing, though, like I said, is just seek God's direction in all of it. Do you have any uh, to add to that? No? Okay. So who do I contact if I'd like to serve in one of these mini ministry opportunities? Once again, that's not, that will all be available. We have this, that's why we developed this chart of who and if you come to one of us, we'll refer you to that person. We're, we're not going to, you know, if it's a men's ministry, I'm going to refer you to Jerry instead of asking it. So that way he can start developing all the contacts and the people and all that kind of stuff. So, so we'll be kind of trying to uh, just lead everybody in the right direction as far as who who's in charge of it. So, yeah, that one's kind of we've answered several times tonight. Can leadership give a biblical text to validate why we as a church are spending so much money and headed in this direction? Why the sudden change? <laughs> okay, well, first of all, we're not spending so much money. Second time is short. Uh, again, the way that the direction of the church is, is not to be a, 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 a country club for the saints, but to be a hospital for the sinners, for those that are hurting, okay? And if you have been here for four years plus, you see the change, okay? And as to the biblical text, why, why should you? I, I, again, we talked about it. It's like, how big is our God? Okay, occupy the time, parable of the, of, uh, uh, of the minus Luke, chapter 19, verses 11 through 27. Basically, verse 13 says, So he called ten of his servants, delivered to them ten minus, and said to them, Do business till I come. Do business, occupy, continue in God's business. Jesus said in Luke chapter 2, verse 49, Why did you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? Time is short. We all need to be doing the business of God, sharing the gospel. And for us being able to equip, we all should be using the gifts that God has given to us in our home church, edifying each other. And, and, and I, I, I can give verses galore. I mean, Mark 16, 15, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. 
Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. That's Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 through 20. Uh, through 20. Acts, the Great Commission. It's Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. To the ends of the earth, we got to get out. So I think there's huge scriptures to valid, validate us to, to spend whatever God has allowed to come in for his business. I'm not going to bury it. And the, and the goal that Paul talked about that Christ redemption purchased, he says, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will. So here we start to see what God's will is. According to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, that's when we're all in new heaven and new earth, that he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in earth, in him. So that's the goal, is, to, is because God is, is building his body, which is the bride of Christ, for Christ. And he's going to set us on an, in a new creation, which is who we are in Christ. We are a new creation. Well, he's actually going to create new heavens and earth for us to live in forever. That's the goal of redemption. That's what the atonement of Christ has purchased. So on this side of heaven, what the goal is for us, it says, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. For what purpose? for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ until, purpose statement, we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of who the Son of God is. To be a perfect man, that's mature in Christ, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ himself, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the tricky of, trickery of man and the cunningness and craftiness and deceitful and plottiness, but speaking the truth in love. How many times have you heard the truth in love being preached from behind the pulpit? That's what we're here for, that we might grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body, for what purpose? Edifying itself in the love of God. So as we do that, it begins to spread and begins to spread and begins to spread. And every single unbeliever that comes in contact with our witness, because we are the witness of Christ, death, burial, and resurrection, ascension, sitting on the throne in heaven, ruling over every single thing, understanding that will, that one day we will be in new heavens and earth, a dwelling place made for God. We witness that reality, and they come into that truth. That's what this is all about. It's not about us. It's about His glory. It's about where we're headed, the hope of glory, Christ within us. Amen. You know, to me, it's pretty simple in the sense it's about the reach of the church. Um, and this is going to, you know, kind of, I'm going to put this in context of the last couple of questions we have here so we have enough time to answer, answer any questions you guys have. But it's about the reach of the church, both in reach and outreach. And, you know, um, to me, that question needs to be turned around, not so much why do we spend so much money on the direction we're going, but... Um, why don't, why wouldn't we, you know, in the sense that, you know, um, Christ said, what value is it if you gain the whole wide world and lose your soul? You know, so the money means nothing. Uh, a big bank account doesn't mean nothing as far as a church goes. But if we can use that money 
um, to save souls or to minister to souls or equip the saints to minister to the souls. You know, it, the inreach part is our job is to equip you guys to go out. You know, we can only do so much. We're just, you know, um, one man. Um, but at the same time, the outreach part of it, after we've done the inreach, the outreach is not cheap. It's not. But you know what? I'd rather take those steps of faith and the chance of, uh, you know, shining the light of the gospel into the darkness um, than sitting back here being comfortable in this building. This building means nothing. You know, sometimes I wished we didn't have this building in the sense it's easy to get comfortable. But, you know, what we're really after is, is not building, uh, you know, more stuff, but we want to use the stuff that we have to reach the lost, right? We've talked about the multi-purpose uh, building so that we can bring kids in and have events and have, you know, they can have better ways to minister to them. We have the outreach center. We have all these different things and it's not to have things, but it's to where we can meet lost souls where they're at. They're not gonna come to this church, but they may go to the food pantry or they may smell the barbecue on a Friday night and stop by and hear the gospel preach. All of that takes money. So to me, it's like, as long as we have a dollar in the bank account, why are we not spending it on outreach and on this new way? Um, you know, that's to me a, a better use of it than, than trying to hoard it. Cause what good is it? You know, it's not gonna save souls in a savings account. So, um, I don't know if you guys have anything to add to that, but what is the price of a soul? What would you give to have someone that you care about, you love, except Christ? What is that worth? Everything. And someone said once, you know, Charles Spurgeon said that every single time he went out to preach, he said he was preaching to an unsaved Charles Spurgeon because of the fact that he always said, you know, what, what would I give or how much time and energy would I spend? How much money would I give in order to save an unsaved Charles Spurgeon? That's the way he looked at his whole ministry. That's why it was so effective because he kept thinking, why in the world would God save me? Well, so that we would be interdependent, completely locked one to another for the praise and the glory of his grace as we go out and begin to share that kind of a desperate love for what Christ has done for other people's soul. And until we have experienced that kind of love, do we want to even go out and have a hunger for that kind of soul? Amen. So... So what we'll do is um, I am monitoring the service online. So if any of you online would like to ask a question, you can type it in the comment section and we'll do our best. And then if there's anybody in the sanctuary that has a question, you can lift up your hand and Jerry will come around with the microphone. Pastor Jerry, call it Pastor Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any questions here? Well, you he's wait. coming with, and the reason why we have you using the, the microphone because people are watching uh, the live stream and, and they can't hear us. So not to add what you already have on there that's quite full, but have you guys thought about, prayed about a singles ministry? Oh, yeah. uh, well, well, and let me say, I've tried several churches in the area just to see if they have one, and there is none. Well, as, as, as uh, Aaron had, had mentioned, what we're currently, this flow chart is what we currently have. We have another flow chart. This is what we want to add. Okay. Currently in three, in three years. So to answer that question, yes, we've thought about that. And, and that's in the vision. It is. Yeah, there's a three-year goal. And it is, the flow chart is, it makes this one, that's why it can't fit on the screen. It, it takes literally about an hour to go through each PowerPoint presentation and to break it down because there's so much that God has put upon the leadership's heart. There's so much that God has put upon Pastor Troy and Kevin's heart as far as, as, far as looking out and seeing how much more 
that God wants to do in, in this church and, and outside of this church and getting outside of these walls. So, and one of them is, is, is not only investing in the next generation, but it's in marriages, it's in families, it's in the single life, it's in every single part of, of bereavement when, when widows are lost their husbands and, and or, or wives. We, we've, we've tried to um, really pinpoint so many areas that are currently not happening and that have a potential of building the foundation that is unshakable when it comes to time for trials and suffering and, and everything that we go through as Christians so that, the out, so that the world looking in will know for sure that our faith and our trust is genuine, it's real. So that's what, that's what this whole thing is about is witness, witness, witness. And we are a strong witness when we are going through those kinds of severe trials. And I believe that they're coming even greater and greater with urgency as the time gets shorter. And we should really prepare our people on how to suffer in the will of God so that when they do ask for the hope that's within us, we can give them not only an answer, but we can live it out in front of them and they will know it's genuine. Any other questions here in the sanctuary? Oh, I know there's questions. Yeah. I know there's questions. Anything online? Nothing online right now. So, okay, like with the singles ministry, uh, who here is single? Okay, now everybody turn around, look, see who's available. <laughs> Some of those are widows. Okay. See, wow. See, the ministries of the single ministry is taken care of right there. We've, uh, but you see, what, what's neat is as, as we're talking about what we currently have and the vision that God has given me and, and Kevin and Aaron as we, as we talk through this, it's so much larger. And you know what? That takes you. That takes you because each one of you have a gift. Okay? There's only so much that we can do, but together. Amen to that. Yeah. And, and one of the questions was, it's, it says, if we here at Calvary Chapel Grants Pass are having difficulty filling the needs of our current ministries, are we not in fact setting unattainable goals? I think that we first addressed that at the beginning and throughout this whole thing. But oftentimes, you know, when, when we, we go down the, the hallway in between services or enduring services, and we see so many people that are not volunteering, so many people that are just coming in and they're coming to church and they're getting fed and they're, and they're going home and throughout the week, you know, they go through their, the drudgery of life. But I think that as we start to unfold this ministry and you start to see the doors that are open, a lot of times there's people that are willing to serve and they're wanting to serve and they have the, the gifts to serve, but they don't know how, they don't know where. And so I think that one of the greatest um, benefits from this vision is you're going to see all of the areas and all of the doors and all of the ministries and all the places and all the times and seasons where you can, where you can come in, where you can, where you can, um, and it's not going to be something that has to be full time. It can be part time. It can start off slow. It can just be getting involved in little areas and making little steps of faith. And then you'll see God at work and you'll see how he wants to use you. And then you can become more and more involved and understand that the fullness of what God wants to do because of the gifts he's given you. See, and this will get more specific too as time goes because what, we'll what we'll do is take Pastor Jerry, for instance. He'll have his... Uh, the groups that he's over, the men's ministry, et cetera, will have their vision statement of how uh, they're going to fulfill the vision or be a part of the vision. And so as that goes, he'll be able to take those groups and the people that serve under those ministries and be able to get more specific and, and how practically uh, they'll be able to do it in those ministries to come alongside the vision. And so, so here, we're just trying to give an overview, you know, but it'll be the actual, you know, those actual ministries 
uh, we'll be able to be more specific about how it relates to them. You know, how if you're a part of the women's Bible study or how you're a part of, you know, the hospitality team, how that's going to interact with the vision. And it'll be the more specifics. Because right now I know, you know, we're, we're leaving a lot of different holes because we're talking up here and really ministry happens down here, right? And, and so we're just trying to fill that on down. And what we're really trying to create here, you know, I, I seem to be the blunt one up here, is we're trying to create a church that where, um, you know, everybody who calls this their home church, uh, you know, doesn't feel comfortable just sitting in the pews, that they're serving somewhere, you know. Uh, I've said it many times, if you have a heartbeat, then God has a ministry for you. God wants to use you in a, one yeah. way or another. And, and that's the way we really need to be, because as Pastor Troy has said, you know, time's short. Uh, you know, there's souls in the balance, and what are we doing about it? So, and that's really kind of in a nutshell, what we're trying to do here is, is develop a, a orderly way of being able to accomplish the vision because we serve a God of order, right? And, and we were starting this, what, two years ago or close to two years ago and then COVID hit and that kind of changed the focus of, not changed the focus of why we were here, but changed the way we were operating and, and just trying to you know, figure out this new reality, but it's time to get back to what the church has been called to do. And we really want to help um, not only guide, but be with you every step of the way. For instance, let's say um, someone wants to open up their home for a home fellowship and they say, well, what do I have to do? What is there any steps I have to take? Well, one of the steps might be is to come under another home fellowship and to part and to participate in that home fellowship to see what the responsibilities are, to, to, to interact and to know what goes on in a home fellowship, what's required and the and the role of it. And then as that season happens in your life, you, you become more aware of it. You become more aware of the responsibilities, the activities, the people, the inner reaction, what's in store for you. And then you can make that next step. And it's like, you know, raising up perhaps a missionary to go out and, and maybe look to see where a church could be planted. Well, how do you do that? Well, we, we're going we're gonna to have classes, hopefully, and, and we're going to raise up people and we're going to be looking for the anointing and the gifts and callings that God has given. And through the classes and through training and through discipleship with the men's ministry like Pastor Jerry, and we're going to be um, having like what we're doing with the... Uh, the um, apologetics with Tim. All of that is not just to, to fill a Sunday night. It is to educate. It's to instruct. It's to build the body of Christ for the sake of ministry. Any other questions before I, 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 I end this? Uh, a beautiful blonde. Do you have, do you have a question? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anything online? Okay, there we go. Because then I'll, 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 I'll end it. Uh, so my wife, my wife's nudging me over here. Uh, we were both curious. What's the vision for U-turn? Along with uh, this vision, is there is U-turn um, in this uh, set of visions, or is it a separate vision, or? Well, we purposely kept U-turn out of it, and, and the reason why, one, it's, yes, it's a, um, U-turn's a separate organization, but, of course, they're interrelated in, in all the church does, but this is, this is more just the church vision, and, of course, U-turn kind of has its own vision, and, it, of course, it does play into, in a sense, the vision that, that the church has, because... It's a, it's a big part of the ministry that does go on here for sure. But what we're trying to do is the reason why it's not in here is just because we're, this is just the church part. Of course, U-turn will still be here. We'll still do everything. That's not going to change. But like I said, we're just, this is more just as an organization, Calvary Chapel Grants Pass is part. You know, Calvary Chapel Grants Pass supports you turn, you know, in, in so many different ways, you know, it's kind of that mutual 
that mutual thing, and I couldn't imagine one without the other at this point. But um, like I said, this is more just the the ministries that are, we're trying to separate the ministries of the church. And, and then of course, U-Turn's a parachurch organization that co both comes alongside and supports Calvary Chapel and Calvary Chapel comes alongside it and supports it. Does that make sense? So, yeah. so we didn't want to, cause last year or the year before we kind of had vision that included all the stuff with U-Turn and stuff. And it got a little, we wanted clarity by keeping those separate, if that makes sense. Okay. And then uh, just briefly, uh, my wife's been coming to church here seven, eight years. I've, I've been coming four years on and off, uh, give or take. And I got to see the transition when Pastor Troy came here. And um, I just want to say thank you because, you know, we as a church, we need um, leadership. We need a guideline. And it's it's really awesome that you guys have gotten together, even in a time like now when it's hard to just get together to do anything, to figure anything out through this pandemic, through everything that's going on. So I personally, we as a family, just appreciate you guys sitting down to do this because I know it's tough and uh, it's good to have direction. You know, man plans the ways, but God directs our set, our steps. So um, we just appreciate it. Well, thank you. And, and, and that's the key because it's God. You know, that's the key. It's it, it's God um, and, and, and the vision. Uh, how he has put on my heart and our hearts. And I wish I could say and take the credit, well, I knew what I was coming up with three years ago. <laughs> no. But but now it, it, God has just made it all fit. Go deeper. Go further. Never changing cross. Keep the main. I mean, it just all fits. And 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 the in reach, the outreach. And it's a vision, it, it's from God. And then see, that's why it's so important for us to pray, to always continually be in prayer. I encourage the church, and it's so neat, I encourage the church to, if you have that time, to come pray with us corporately. And if not, pray at home, but pray, pray, pray. And as we're running out of time, I, I just want to, I'm going to end on this. Um, the, the last real question we had from the questions that were given to us earlier, uh, and, and one of them, I think, uh, Pastor Kevin read uh, if we at Calvary Chapel Grants Pass are having difficulty filling the needs of our current ministries, are we not in fact setting unattainable goals? And, and again, we talked about that. How big is our God? God chose Gideon. And when the Mennonites came, there was 120,000. And all that Gideon mustered up was 32,000. And what did God say? Nah, too much. So he started to whittle, whittle those down, and it finally came down to 300. I mean, 32,000 versus 120,000, what is that? One to four? Yeah. If every, every one of those 32,000 were on their best day, maybe they can get four before they got taken down. But then God said no, because then you'd get the credit. He whittled it down to 300. 300 versus 120,000. What is that? I don't know, 400 to one. I don't care how good you are. You cannot. There's no way each one would be able to kill for God. Our God is huge. Let me close with this. Psalm 33, verses six through nine. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He, gather, he gathers the waters of the sea together as a heap he lays up the deep in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. That's our God. That's our God. He's a mighty warrior. He's in the midst of us. Amen. World doesn't have a chance. No, that so ends it perfectly, I think. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we come before you, and I just thank you for how good you are. I just thank you for what you have done. And we all here, and those watching, we just pray in, in, in unison. We praise you for what you are going to do. 
what you are going to do. I just, I, I ask that you to speak to each one of us this evening how we could occupy the time, how we could redeem, keep doing your business. And I just pray that your Holy Spirit guides, guides in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 God bless.